So type checking is basically telling the compiler to provide validations on given data so it can make sure that it's being used correctly. And Luau, which is Robos's Lua, supports a gradual type system through the use of type annotations and type inference. But what are these things? Well, inferences are different modes that you can assign to scripts. You have non-check, non-strict and strict from all of which the strict one is the best in my opinion, because for non-strict you have to define types for different variables that are coming from an outside environment, where in strict mode that variable already has an exported type. And I will be saving you the pain of going through the documentation and also the Lua webpage, as well as some other dev forum posts. And I will be making sure to explain everything I can in this video. So right now we are in studio and to enable non-strict mode by default, we need to go into file and then beta features, and then enable this option that scripts are non-strict by default instead of the beta features and then just save. But I'm not going to do that right now because I'm going to mostly show off the strict mode and why it should be used instead. And this is how we assign the type inference inside of a script by doing dash dash, exclamation point and then strict or non-strict or the third option non-check. So the first thing I'm going to talk about are variables and how you can assign a type to a variable. So in strict mode, if you have a variable named x, by default it's not going to have any type. But if you assign a number to it, it's going to have a type number. Right here it says that x is a number whenever I hover over it, but if it was non-strict, you can see that the x is any. And in non-strict mode, we have to assign a type, which we do by a colon whenever we define a variable and then followed by the type, which is a number in this case. So right now, X is going to be a number in the non-strict mode. But what happens if it's not a number, if it's an empty string, you can see that if I hover it, it's going to say that type string couldn't be converted into a number. It's saying that this value doesn't have a number type. And same thing happens in strict mode. But in strict mode, if an x is an empty string, it's going to have a string value instead of a number. So overall, you want to assign a type to this variable right here in strict mode if it doesn't have any value. So x is a number right here, but x is not defined. If I define x right here and say that it's 5, I'm not gonna get any errors, but if I do a string instead, it's giving the same warning as previously. But if I print out type of x, and then hit run, there won't be any problems with this script. So the type notations don't break anything at runtime. So that's how you give a variable a type, but there are also different symbols that you can apply to these types. One is a question mark, which is going to say that x is either going to be a number or going to be nil. This says that the value of x could be basically non-existent. So I could assign a number or a nil. But if it's not going to have the question mark, is going to provide an error. That type number couldn't be covered into a number. So that's going to be the question mark symbol. Then you have a double colon. So if I define let's say y this time and give it a 5 value, first it's going to say that it's going to be a number, but I can override it with number and question mark. So now it's going to say that y is going to be a number question mark. Something like this is called assertion and this is used when you want to assert a type. I could even tell it that it can be a string, but it's going to give a warning because Y is trying to cast a string type on a number. So it could be a good usage of something like this since, since the question mark is self-explanatory and doesn't really need a specific use case explained. Let's say we wanted to get a part from the workspace. So you can do part is equal to workspace dot part. And what type is it going to have? It's going to have a type of any. So now we can tell this script that this part is not any, but this part is going to be a base part. So now it's going to be a base part instead. And now let's move to this symbol that I forgot the name of. This is a type union, which is used when you want to give a variable multiple types. So I'm going to do local v is going to be equal to a number or string. So right now, whenever I hover over it, it's going to have that type of number or string. So the strict mode is already telling the compiler that this is going to be either a number or a string. But assigning a type of number or string is also going to work with only one value. It's still going to have this type right now, but it's going to be a number. If we do v is equal to string, it's going to work. Then if v is equal to a number, it's going to work. But if I remove this symbol, it's going to give a warning on the string right here. 
and the last one which is the end symbol i can't really show it right now because it's an intersection and unlike the last one which was used to give a variable multiple types that the variable could accept this is an intersection that you use when you want to join two types together and this is used with custom types that you define with the type right here which is the next thing that i wanted to talk about so right now i'm just going to skip this so how do we create a custom type we can have a type of my type which is equal to let's say a number and then i can make a number variable named my number which is going to have the my type type which is set to 10. i could also set this type to number and then question mark and it's going to have that type but there is many other types that we can define for example you can have a function type And this is a bit more tricky because function types would be equal to and by default a function has a type of basically this where this is the function and the arrow this is telling what the function is returning so the function type looks like this and by giving empty brackets right here i don't know how many of you use c sharp let's say but this would be the same as making a void function which is not returning anything so if i made a local my function which would have the function type right now we can see that it's a function that doesn't return anything and if i do my function is equal into a function right now it's not going to expect me to return anything but if i give it a number to return there is going to be an error or a warning rather right here at the end saying that there is nothing that has a number type that's going to be returned from this function so i'm just going to separate this really quickly so right now this function needs to return a number so i can give it a return 10 for example but if i give the function the brackets again it's not going to give any warnings and that's because this function wasn't expected to return anything but it returned a value anyway which the compiler doesn't really mind but there is also another way of telling a function that it can return something by just doing local function named my function 2 Right here at the end, after defining my function, I can just do a colon like I would do at the variables and then say that, hey, this function is going to return a number like this. And it's giving the same error as previously. So we need to return a number right here. And right now, if I define a variable, which is going to be named my number and then just do this function right here, this my number is going to have a number type two. You can see it right here. While in non-strict mode, it wouldn't have it. You can see that it has any and for this my number to be a number we have to define a type right here but in strict mode we don't even need it and there is another thing with the functions so i'm going to make another one and name this one add this add function is going to take two arguments one is number one and the other one is number two and again this is going to return a number and this function is going to return a sum of number one and number two but number one and number two both don't have a type and it's running this problem right here that it's an unknown type used in a plus operation so we need to use type annotations on number one and two here again by saying that number one is a number and number two is a number also you also need to assign types for function arguments so if i do local sum is equal to add and then this function right now expects two arguments and this warning tells you that so we need to give it that so two and six and right now if i print out the sum and just run the game you can see that it printed out eight but this thing with the function where it expects two arguments if you have a function that doesn't expect the arguments all the time to avoid this warning like i said at the beginning with the nilable types that happened by giving them a question mark you can add a question mark right here also and right now this function doesn't expect two arguments but there is also a check you need to do that if number one and number two exist so you can do if if num1 and num2 then you are going to return these numbers and there is also this warning right here because we return a number only if we provide the arguments so we need to change the type notation right here also and then just return the nil value after the sum and there are also tables that I wanted to leave last if it comes to the scope variables. That's because there is something special with the tables. So normally you can have a table named my table that if you put to an empty table is going to have an empty table type. You can also assign a table type by, by doing these brackets like so, which is a bit different than normally where you would have to type out the type because you can't assign a table right here because table is a global. So this is the table type. 
And if you want to tell this table to only have a certain value or a certain type of items, you can put that type inside of this table right here. So now by doing this, my table is only going to have numbers inside of it. So you can have a table of values like 1, 5, 7, 9, and it's not going to throw a warning. But if you suddenly throw a string in there, there is going to be a problem saying that the string couldn't be converted into a number. But if you do this symbol, which is going to say that it's going to be either a number or a string, then this table is going to have numbers and strings. But that's the basic side of table types and there are also generics. And what a generic table does, it, it assigns the given type to values that you basically defined inside of the table. So you can have a type, table type, then you need to use the pointy brackets, which are less than, more than, and then have your type index right here, which can be T, which can be S, which can be C or whatever. I'm going to leave it as T right now. And then this type would be equal to value one, which is going to have the T type and value two, which is also going to have the T type. Then doing something like this allows you to have a table, which has the table type of a given type which is going to be a string this time, would be equal to a table which already has value 1 and value 2. So you can set value 1 as a string and then value 2 as a string also. And generic by definition is simply a type parameter in which another type could be slotted in. But I was basically mentioning something about different environments from different scripts and how you can export types from them. So by default in strict mode, if I add, let's say, a module script, this is going to be something like a settings module, which is going to have a function named module.getSettings. And I'm going to move this script right here. And in the getSettings, I'm basically going to return a table, which is going to have something like a name, gravity, field of view, just different settings like this. Right now, if I require the module and just assign settings right here. So now if I hover over the settings, you can see that they are already transferred. The type of basically this table has been transferred into the environment of this script right here because of the strict mode. But if I change it to non-script and then hover over, you can see that script settings have any type. So like I said, the strict mode already transfers this as default. And of course you can enable strict mode inside of this script too. If you had another function, let's say function module, and then choose whatever like change value or change values, where this would have value one and also a value two. And value one and value two are both going to be numbers. And because of strict mode, we don't need to tell this function to return something like a number. If we make a custom value, which is going to be a number, right now it's a nil, then the custom value would be value one times value two, and then we return the custom value. The strict mode is already going to know that custom value, if we do settings that change values, this is already going to be a number because it returned a number from here. But like previously mentioned, it's expecting two arguments, which are also numbers, but still the type of a custom value is a number. But really quickly, I need to say that if you guys are finding this tutorial informative, then please leave a like, I would really appreciate that. If you want to support me, you can also become channel members for benefits on my YouTube channel and also my Discord server, as well as an access to my first asset pack. But back to the video. But if this was, let's say, non-strict mode, then custom value wouldn't have a number type, it would be any. To export a type from this module script, we need to do export and then type, which is going to be named my type would be equal to, and just to keep it simple, this is going to be a number. So right now, custom value, instead of having the number type, it needs to have my type. Neat thing that we can do from exporting a type on a module is to do a type notation right here, that's going to be set from settings, and then my type, which you can see that is a number. So right now, the custom value is going to have the custom type. And I can also change it to a table, which is going to have value 1, that's going to be, let's say, an x, which is a number, and then y, which is also a number. And now this custom value needs to be a table where x is going to be value 1, and then y is going to be value 2. So right now this custom value, it's still saying that it's a number, so what you need to do is just basically write anything in the compiler on that line, like just removing and adding the colon. So now when I hover over it, it's going to have the exported type. 
And the last thing that I wanted to basically to show is going to be the usage of type notations inside of an object oriented programming script for which I do have a template on and you can see that it's kind of just unreadable but this is basically the implementation of type checking inside of an object oriented programming script. So you have the type implementation right here, which has the index of the meta table, the new constructor, and then this template function right here. For every method you add to a class, you have to basically, let's say I wanted to make a function named class function, suddenly it's throwing a warning saying that cannot add this property inside of that table. So for every method, you just need to do basically this, which is saying that, hey, this implementation has this method in it, and it's a function that returns whatever and this function also needs to have the self class like this and for each argument provided into this function let's say i'm going to add value one which is going to throw a warning again saying that this method doesn't explain a value because this value one is not defined and needs to be defined after the self which is going to be value and then a number and by doing this right here, if I hover over the value, it's going to say that it's a number. And that's the implementation. And then you have the class type, which is the type of setting the meta table to the table with the self variables. Let's say I had a self my number right here, where this would be uncommented. Then the given number, again, the given number has to go into the constructor. So given number, which is a number, then you have self my number, which would need to go right here. And this constructor right here doesn't need the self with the class type because self is being defined right here. Oh, and this is giving an error. That's because this should let me here. But anyway, so you override the type of this table, which is the table that you assign the meta table to with the parameters from the new constructor. And then this is the meta table, which has the implementation type where this implementation is what I basically just talked about. Then you define the class right here with the implementation type. And this assertion needs to be right here, although we are assigning the save type right here. And that's because it's going to basically just throw this warning that the class type couldn't be compatible with the implementation because it doesn't have the fields from the implementation right there. Then you set the index of the meta table and then you proceed with writing the function and everything else. And I want to do a tutorial on object oriented programming in the future, which is also probably going to use the type notation because to be honest, I use this so much that I forgot how to use normal object oriented programming without the types. So yeah, but that's basically going to be everything for today. So if you found this to informative then please leave a like and yeah thank you guys for watching and see ya